Hello, I'm Dr. Herman again, and I want to share with you something that is commonly uh, uh, studied and misunderstood when you're going to a doctor for your chronic pain uh, condition. And that is whether it's fatigue or insomnia or it's fibromyalgia or it's uh, stress levels that are just not, you just can't function well, or it's really with a thyroid condition, like a hypothyroid condition. I want to educate you today or share with you today about a gland in your body that really has, uh, it, it's what absorbs all of the stress in our lives. And there's a gland above the right kidney and a gland above the left kidney called your adrenal gland, adrenal gland. And you may be more familiar with that term if I share with you another word for a hormone that comes out of the adrenal gland called adrenaline. That's right, adrenaline or adrenal-in. Adrenalin are, are excitatory hormones that come out of, well, if I can call it a hormone, but excitatory chemicals that come out of the adrenal gland and uh, they respond in periods of stress. Let's understand something else about the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland has a stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is an adrenal gland hormone that comes out in times of stress stress like emotional stress. You get angry with your spouse or your kids or your neighbors or your boss or the taxes are due or whatever it is. The adrenal gland responds and lets out too much cortisol when you have blood sugar levels that are not normal. When your blood sugar levels are not kept between 85 as the low and 99 as the high end of normal, you start showing signs of extra adrenal gland function where the adrenal gland lets off more cortisol stress hormones. Uh, you can have pain in the body, chronic pain issues, pain all the time, stresses the person's emotions more, and so on, and that leads to extra adrenal production of cortisol. Let's take it a step further and understand why this is so important to understand. And I'm going to show you in a moment what the rhythm is and what it may be in you and why we have to look for this and why it's so important to fix it, is when you have uh, this, this cortisol production at such a regular levels, cortisol is a very toxic stress hormone that once it gets up to the brain in periods of stress, it eats away at the memory center of the brain. A year ago, I did a, uh, I was involved, I was one of 50 doctors from around the world who did a human brain dissection class for three days. We were in California. and. When we sliced open the human brain, we noticed that under the side of the brain here, there is supposed to be a cherry-like structure called the hippocampus. And some of these patients, or some of these cadavers that we studied, the cherry-like structure had shriveled up to little, less than a raisin, real tiny, all shriveled up. This hippocampus is responsible for memory. When the hippocampus is getting atrophied, degenerated by too much cortisol exposure, and we, it happens to all of us because we all have stress in our lives. So when we get too much cortisol exposure, it will shrivel up the memory center of the brain. And that's terrible because you don't want shriveled up body parts, do we? Uh, we've got to understand that the adrenal gland is in direct concert with, in a male, the testes, in a female, the ovaries. The adrenal gland is in direct concert with the thyroid and with the pituitary gland. So a little bit of insider info about the endocrine system is you need a good functioning pituitary gland to control the thyroid. Pituitary adrenal communication, pituitary ovarian or test testicular communication. So what do you think happens when one of the dominoes in that whole endocrine system falls down? When the adrenal gland is weak or too much, it's overburdened with stress, everything else will start to fall down. You can have ovarian malfunctions, you can have estrogen production malfunctions, progesterone, male, male hormone malfunctions, thyroid glandular hormone malfunctions, pituitary malfunctions. So we've got to understand that you've got to look for the stresses in life and be able to aid your body in removing what stresses we can remove, like food sensitivities, like leaky gut reactions like other invasions of certain infections that might be in the gut and other emotional stressors that we can't remove, what we can do is, is take certain things that have been found in nature to inhibit this cortisol or hyper or extra cortisol response. 
When we look at an adre a proper adrenal gland test, we're going to see this graph. And I don't have it to share with you on this video, but I'm just going to draw it out here. In the morning, you're supposed to have high adrenal output of cortisol. It's supposed to be very high at like 6 to 8 in the morning. And slowly throughout the day, it should be going down like a ski slope, going down this nice curve to bottoming out very low production towards 10, 11, and 12 o'clock at night. The reason for this is cortisol output is supposed to be high in the morning to wake you up. It opens your eyelids, it gets you up, it gets you out of bed. If you, when we run your adrenal gland study, and we see it should be up this high in the morning, but instead in your case, and you're fatigued all morning, the adrenal gland output may be very low. If this cortisol output is only 50% or 30% or 20% or 10% of what it's supposed to do, how can you possibly have energy in the morning? And the answer is you can't. As we're going down that ski slope, if your cortisol output is always below the level of where it's supposed to be for a normal functioning human being, you're, no, you're going to feel fatigued all day. That's chronic fatigue. And let's say now you get to sleep uh, or time where you're supposed to go to sleep. It's at 10 o'clock at night or 11 or 12 or 1 in the morning and you you say, well, I can't fall asleep. Well, that's sometimes what we find in patients is that instead of it bottoming out at nighttime, remember the ski slope effect of cortisol, is that we find the cortisol starts to actually function too much. The adrenal gland is pumping out this cortisol too much at that 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night. You can't fall asleep then. Because when we take it one step further, is that in order for you to be able to sleep at night, you need low production of cortisol you need high production of melatonin. If you have cortisol levels that are coming back high at night, your melatonin is uh, going to automatically be low. These two, cortisol and melatonin, are in inverse proportion to one another. So when we look at a good adrenal test uh, study, we see where the cortisol rhythm is in your 24-hour cycle, and we're able to understand what we need to do to aid that and fix it. And that can be fixed, and that can be aided. It takes time, but it can be done when we use functional medicine approaches to correct the function of that adrenal gland. So let's understand again, just to recap here. You need a good adrenal gland study. Adrenal gland is responding to all the stress, whether it's food sensitivities, whether it's a leaky gut, whether it's gut infections, whether it's sugar imbalances that are even still within the normal laboratory range, as I mentioned earlier. Hormonal imbalances in your system can cause this adrenal gland problem. Thyroid problems can cause the adrenal gland problems, and adrenal gland can cause thyroid problems. So we always have to look for these. Again, I want to thank you for sticking through this few minute video that I'd like to share with you this information. Uh, again, my number is 954-370-3100. I look forward to meeting with you and helping you get well, and you can get well. Thank you.